As beaver trappers, we have all heard the term used for lower grade beaver, hatters. And earlier in the DVD, we heard from Phil Patterson on exactly what is required in the beaver pelt to make it suitable for use in making hats or felting. Felting is a fascinating process, maybe the oldest form of cloth, way before woven cloth and by far the strongest of the natural fibers. The process has changed little since medieval times. Machinery might have changed, but the process is much the same. Let's take a look. Fur felt used to be a very basic and widely used fabric, but now only has limited applications. As a matter of fact, there is only one cutting plant for processing beaver into felt left in the U.S. That's the American Fur Felt Company located in New Jersey. They cut tens of thousands of beaver pelts each year for two major hat makers. Beaver under fur makes the best quality felt because each individual hair has a series of barbs along the hair shaft that grabs the bars on the surrounding hairs and creates an interlocking system. When these pelts first arrive from the auction house, they are drummed to clean them of any grease and dirt that might interfere with the next step, which is called carroting. In this step, the pelts are treated chemically to elevate the hairs on each barb shaft. This will help the hairs bind even tighter later in the process. It also turns the pelts a deep orange color, hence the name carroting. Early in the history of felting, a chemical mixture containing mercury was used in the carroting process. The men working with this, the hatters, were exposed to the fumes for years, which eventually caused uncontrollable tremors and a form of dementia, giving rise to the term mad as a hatter. The pelts are then cut into strips. This is done so they can be fed through the cutting machines. In the cutting process, the fur is shaved off the pelt. The fur is then run through a series of large blowers that separate the underfur from the guard hairs. It also separates out any remnants of hide that may have been left from the cutting process. Once the underfur is cleaned and separated, it is rolled out of the blowers and packed for shipment to the hat makers. Currently, there are only two companies left in North America that make hat bodies using high-quality beaver felt. The most widely known, Hatco, which makes the iconic Stetson cowboy hat, and also the Resistall line of hats. The bagged fur, as delivered to the hat manufacturer, must undergo several mixing and refining processes before it is ready to be formed into hat bodies. After mixing, the fur has assumed a muddled grayish color and the original furs entering the mixture can't even be seen. Mixed fur is then blown, a process which removes clotted fur, air and dirt. Fur coming out of the delivery end of the process resembles an endless sheet of gray absorbent cotton, soft, light and down. There are two main steps in making fur into a hat. First, the fur is made into a large, loose cone, and then this cone is shrunk and shaped into the finished hat. Forming the cone is really the key to felt hat making. It is done in a forming machine. Picture an upright, cylindrical compartment, and inside this compartment, on the floor, a copper cone about three feet high points upwards. This cone revolves slowly. It is perforated, and an exhaust fan beneath it sucks the air and the loose fur in the chamber down to the cone. The fibers are interangled every which way, but only loosely. The operator carefully wraps damp burlap cloth around the cone and then immerses it for a short time in a vat of hot water. That's when the felting starts. The hot water shrinks the fibers just a little, but yet enough to knit them into a flimsy layer of felt. The layer of felt is stripped from the cone. It is several times the height of the finished hat, and so delicate that it must be handled with the utmost care. Now the shrinking has begun in earnest, until the body is felted down successfully from its original huge dimensions to its final size. The body is folded, dipped in hot water, and rolled with pressure. This is repeated a number of times. Under the action of the hot water and the manipulation, the fibers shrink, their projecting barbs locking together tighter and tighter until when the cone is no bigger than the finished hat, it is so tightly felted that a strong man cannot pull it apart. Machines which do the shrinking are rollers like big wash wringers. These bodies are wrapped in cloth and passed through the rollers, over which the hot water is poured. Thus, hand rolling is mechanically simulated. Once the felting is complete and the hat reaches the desired size, a rough shape is obtained by stretching. Crown stretching is done on a machine that has a frame over which the cone is placed, and above this metal fingers. 
The fingers massage the tip of the cone, pressing the felt between the rib of the frame, thereby stretching it. The brim stretcher grips the brim with metal fingers and works on the same principle. Then the hats are sanding to smooth the felt. The hats are blocked on machines depending on the desired style, and the finished shape is obtained by blocking the crown. In the final step, the brim is impregnated with a stiffening shellac, and headbands are sewn in. All hats are rated on a scale of X's. The higher the number of X's, the more beaver fur in the hat. The very best hats are 4X and made of 100% beaver fur.